stop dragging your FJ's butt. It might just be me, but it looks like this trailer hitch sinks pretty low below the vehicle. This is a draw tight trailer hitch, and that's gonna be the first point that drags as you come off of the drop. Let's do some quick measurements, see how low it actually does hang. Then we're gonna switch this out for the OEM. Let's get down and dirty. I've got my safety glasses on because I'll be underneath the car. Got my socks and sandals on. The bottom of the tube measures 16 and a half inches. The bottom of these safety loops hang 16 inches above the ground. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do under here. This trailer hitch is held on by two hex head screws along with a nice nut on each side. Cut through this tape that's holding the trailer wiring to the hitch. This hitch should weigh quite a bit, so I'm gonna make sure there's a jack out here to hold up one end while I remove the final nut. Here's one of my favorite tools working on big trucks. This is a two foot long ratcheting wrench. I'm using this to remove these hex head screws as well as this nut. I broke all of these fasteners loose and was turning them by hand. Figured I'd use the air tool to take these off. And as soon as I hit it with the air tool, the nut inside that's welded to the frame came loose. So now I have this fastener that I'm going to have to cut off. So I got myself a cutoff wheel so I'll be working on that. With a three inch cutoff wheel, I was able to easily cut off this fastener. However, this one also, the nut inside of the frame has broken. So this bin's free. I'll have to cut this guy off as well. Ugh, this second one took me a while to cut off here. This trailer hitch weighs 35.7 pounds with all the hardware. This is a 24 inch magnet, as well as a little claw. I'm gonna get the bolt out from here and the rest of these studs and nuts. I fished them all out of here. Here's what those pieces look like. This is the bolt that came with the original hitch, and then these are the captured nuts that actually came undone. Here's something a little interesting. This is the wiring for the Toyota. This monstrosity here is what whoever wired in that hitch used. See, those wires are getting cut off between the grommet that seals and the body of this FJ. So this is a crap wiring job. So I'll probably yank this out and put in the Toyota OEM product. So that'll cost me another hundred bucks or so. Here's the upper view of that wiring mess. Look at that. Wires right up against these sharp cutting edges. While we're under here, we're going to remove this sensor wire here, disconnect it. And also, we're gonna disconnect the wire from this other side over here. These clips are removed by pushing down on this tab right here until it clicks. You pull it straight off. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the four screws that hold the bumper on, on the underside. Two, three, and then one over here. That's number four. Then inside here, use a 10 millimeter socket to remove these five screws here. Next, remove this poppet. Use a little flat blade screwdriver to pop out the inside. And then pull the whole clip out. Final step to remove this bumper is you're going to reach on the side here and pull straight out and then back. I want to show you what we're fighting against. So the first thing that we pulled out was this here, which is a little poppet that fits in this hole here. So that's just a straight force to pull that out. And then you have catches up here. One, two, three. And those fit into these little slots here. So that was that other ripping sound that you heard as I pulled that off. It's relatively lightweight. There's a little piece of styrofoam that I'm going to remove from the top of the actual bumper surface itself. You can see there's these little styrofoam pegs that fit into the little grommets. Here's the bumper in all its glory. Some surface rust. Take care of that with fluid film as well as the actual mounting positions here. You've got six holes here. These inboard ones, judging by, I don't see a captured nut on these two. And then on the underside here, there are two additional holes. They are a little rusted, so we'll have to clean those up. Here I'm using an M12 by 1.25 tap in order to clean out these threads of any rust. Without too much trouble, we've got a nice clean threaded hole. Well, night has fallen, but we still have to get this done. So let's get to it. This new Toyota trailer hitch part number PT28-60060. Comes with a new bumper cover. You've got the hitch itself, hitch cover, hardware pack, which includes some pretty heavy duty hex screws here, as well as a wire attachment. Full welds all the way across the top here. It's got some gusseting to help with the strength fully welded all the way around the hitch itself. 
The tube goes through two sheets of metal here. Load rating of 5,000 pounds max gross weight and 500 pounds max tongue weight. 0.266 inches. Two of the bolts go through double that thickness. Total weight of this hitch plus all the hardware needed to install it. Nine pounds, 7.3 ounces. I've decided to reuse these bolts from the previous installation because the two bottom capture nuts have come out. On the bottom here, I'm using a 5 8 inch grade eight washer. Here's that bolt fed in through the top of the frame along with the washer. On these screws, I've added a little bit of anti-seize. Now this is gonna probably change tightening torque's gonna be because this adds lubrication. The nuts on the back side are a little bit too rusted for my taste. So I bought a couple of M12 by 1.25 hex nuts. These are grade 10.9, part number 982-012D. And I torque these all to 48 foot-pounds in this sequence. Number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the reason I didn't use 60 foot-pounds as it calls out is these are wet. Uh, as opposed to dry. In other words, I lubricated the screws before putting them on, so putting it up to 60 foot-pounds would actually be over-torquing these screws and nuts. 48 foot-pounds is the bottom of the spec, while 72 foot-pounds is the top of the spec. All right, moment of truth. Let's do a couple of quick measurements. I've got 18 and 3 16 inches to the bottom of the square tube, and I've got 18 flat to the bottom of the retainer. Next step is to put the styrofoam back on. Now we're going to remove this piece of plastic from the bumper and, and replace it with the part that came with the hitch. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove these four screws. I recommend using a small pair of needle nose pliers to release these clips. Here's the new piece and here's the old piece. Reuse these old clips and place them in here. They just slide right out. Pop this new panel into the bumper and replace the four screws. Place the bumper back on the car. Don't forget to reconnect your two sensor wires, one on either side. Don't forget about your pop rivet down here. That has to go in a little hole, you can see it. And these three clips up here in the top. So I'm gonna position it and then shove it in. All right, that clip's in. All right, here goes. Replace your clip that went in this hole here and the five screws across the top of this and the four screws underneath. I'll add just a touch of anti-seize to each of these. Here's the trailer hitch fully installed. Definitely tucked in a lot better than the previous version. Subscribe if you want to see part two of this video where I remove the old wiring and replace it with new wiring from Toyota.